by three hours too soon and a minute late. So you've just got yourself a new Google Pixel 9, 9 Pro, Pro Excel or Fold 2. And in this video, I'm gonna show you 17 of the first things to do that might make your iPhone friends make this face. So this is kind of a first things to do features tour. If you are looking for my proper first things to do in regards to settings, I did make a separate video all about that. I'll link it at the end. So anyway, here's number one. So the first thing to do is be mindful of the fact that you do get one year free Gemini Advanced with your purchase of your Pixel 9. So you might as well make the most of it for a year. To set this up, open up your Google Gemini, tap on your profile icon in the top right corner. And in this menu, you should see the option to try Gemini Advanced. So if you tap on this, it will check your eligibility and then you can sign up for free. After the first year, it is $18.99 though. So keep that in mind. But check this out. If you want to set yourself a little reminder as to when those payments will kick in, you can actually use Gemini to add that to your calendar. Okay, now your Google AI has leveled up and you might not realize it, but you've just made a new friend who is a super genius. So you can have conversations with it at any time and to activate it, all you need to do is hold down the power button or swipe up diagonally from either of the lower corners if you set that up. If you haven't, you might wanna check out the first things to do video. Hit this little icon in the bottom right corner for Gemini Live and straight away you can have a chat with your new AI. Now this particular tool is great for coming up with ideas. You can also ask it for suggestions. It's really perfect for getting quick answers to complex questions and generally learning about things that you don't already know. But here's a little side note. If you do want to set a calendar reminder or event or anything like that, you do have to access Gemini via this little mic icon here and not the live one because this one's connected to all of your Google services via Gemini extensions. For example, your emails, your screenshots, your timers and all that stuff. And what's interesting about this access method for Gemini is it's actually linked with Google Assistant. So sometimes it will actually use the Assistant instead of Gemini. They're kind of merged together on this one. Okay, this is such a cool tool and it's very useful. Let's say you found the perfect tutorial video on YouTube, like my first things to do tips and tricks video, for example. And let's say it holds all of the information that you need on whatever topic it is that you're researching. Well, thanks to Gemini, you can actually extract all of that useful information with minimum effort. Check this out, just open YouTube, go to the video that you like, now invoke your Gemini AI and you'll see this, ask about video. Then you can just type in the specific information within that video that you're interested in and Gemini will scan through the video and provide you with all that valuable intel. It's super simple to do, but it's super powerful. Okay, following on from that, here's another very powerful tool that's at your disposal and I think you should be aware of it. It is the Google Recorder app. This is great because you can record conversations, meetings, lectures, and it automatically can create transcripts from those. But also let's refer back to that very useful video that we found on YouTube. You can actually get the voice recorder to do the same thing with audio that's playing on the device. For example, a YouTube video. And once it's complete, it will give you the transcript and you can then summarize the transcript the same way you can with regular voice recordings and have it displayed in some nice concise bullet points. Honestly, I don't think your homework could be any easier than it is today. So I test lots of phones and something I really love about the Samsung Galaxy phones is the ability to summarize web pages. And you can do this on Google Pixel phones, but only if you're in America. What? However, there is still some good news there is a tool here that everybody can use. Open Chrome and go to a web page that you're researching. And if you hit the three dots in the top right corner, you'll see the menu. And then here you have the option to listen to the page. And this is great because let's say you're on the move, you're walking or you're jogging or something like that, but you really wanted to read that article. Well, you can have it play through your earbuds or the phone speakers, and it even continues to play when the screen is locked. And let's say there's a section of a website that you want read out, you can actually highlight that section. And then here, the phone will also give you the option to read that bit out loud. All right, now let's talk about art. Art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. And I do believe AI art is a great way to do that, even if you're not artistic at all. So go to your apps, open up the Pixel Studio, and this at its core is a free AI art generator within your Pixel device. So you can use this to generate images of whatever you like really, although it doesn't like creating people at this point in time. And you can use these to create picture profiles, backgrounds, or to convey a message in a kind of meme 
style. And check this out, I did discover within the YouTube Music app, you can use this AI image creation tool to create cover art for your playlists. Now here's another new Pixel app with AI baked into it. It is of course the Screenshots app. Now I don't know about you, but when I receive important information in an email or I get sent an important QR code, I do tend to screenshot them. So this app collects all of your important screenshots all in one place, and it does read all of the data within those screenshots. And because of this, the Gemini AI can quickly find information within those screenshots. So if you're looking for your ticket to a particular event, you can just type in the information and it will go straight there. And if you did screenshot from an email or a website, it does actually provide links to jump straight back to where you took the screenshot. So this is an incredibly useful tool. All right, here's a follow-up screenshot trick that not many people know about. Have you ever wanted to grab an image from a website, but when you try to download it, it isn't in the right format or it just doesn't let you do it at all? Well, you can use this little hidden feature to solve that problem. Open a web page within Chrome just for example, you can actually open any app and do this. Now, once it's on screen, open your backgrounding and you will see that the phone detects that there are images on that page. Now, if you tap the little gallery icon, you can actually save that image straight to your device in a readable format for your phone. So I think you can see how this could be useful. Now, following on from that, here's a super well hidden feature that most people will never find until they see this video, of course. So make sure you share this video out there. If you've ever used an iPhone, one of the cool features that it has and that you might miss if you've just made the switch is being able to copy text on your phone and then immediately being able to paste it onto your computer. Well, good news, there is a way to do this on Android. Let me show you. Open up your Google Lens app, open one of your screenshots that holds text that you want to copy to your computer. Now select that text and you'll get the little pop-up to copy, but don't do that, hit the three dots. Now you should see the available computers that you can copy to. And if you don't see any here at all, just make sure you've got Google Chrome installed on those computers and you're logged in with your Gmail account that you use to set up your phone. And as you can see here, it does work from Pixel to Mac OS computers as well, which was a huge surprise to me to see most people know that it can be done between Android and Windows, but Android and Mac, this is fantastic news. Okay, so sometimes I struggle to find the right words and quite often people misinterpret what I say and take offense to it, <laughs> even though that was not my intent at all. So I'm glad to see there are tools to help me with this problem and hopefully it will help you too. And it is the Google Gboard's Magic Compose feature. So at this point, from what I can tell, this only works within the Gmail app and it will only work with the Gmail account that you use to set up your Gemini. And at this point in time, it doesn't work with Google business email accounts, which is really frustrating for me. So Google, if you're watching this, please fix that. Anyway, as you begin to compose the body of your email, you will see the help me write in faint letters here. If you swipe across that, this opens up the text window. And now all you need to do is give it an idea of what it is you're trying to say, and it will give you the perfect template for this and hopefully reduce the chances of pissing anybody off. Now let's say the email that is just composed for you does sound good, but it doesn't feel human enough, or maybe it needs a bit more polish, or maybe it's laboring the point too much, or you want it to expand with a bit more information. There is another tool within the Gmail app that can help you do just that. Highlight the text that you want to improve, and then just tap the pen at the top with the sparkles on it. And now you can refine your draft in these various ways. And staying on the topic of writing, here's another way to use AI to get your message across, but this time in slightly more creative and fun ways. This works within the Google Messages app. So next time you're messaging someone, just type out what it is you want to say. And again, at the end of the text field, you will see that pen with the sparkles next to it. Tap this and then you get some fun options, including Shakespeare. So you can suit the action to the word and the word to the action. And yes, before you say it, of course I know who Shakespeare is. He's that famous pirate. Now, remember how we set up that friendly new AI that you can chat with by summoning the Gemini assistant? Well, there's another way you can actually chat with Gemini AI and actually formulate a master plan within the messages app. At the top, you will see the Gemini as one of your contacts. So if you go to this, it will show you all of the stuff you can do with the help of Gemini AI. So if you don't want to speak out loud and have a conversation like that, you can do it via text messages too. 
And I do believe this is actually one of the best ways to use Gemini AI because it will keep a running log of every conversation you have with it. Now the autocorrect and spell check on the Gboard is fantastic. Some say it's the best in the business. And I don't disagree. So you might not need to use this one that much, but you might still find this handy for other reasons. It is the proofreading tool. So this pops up on the Gboard as this little icon here. It's an A with a tick underneath it. So what you can do instead of reading through an entire page of text to check for mistakes, you can actually just highlight it, hit the proofreading button, and that will do all of the hard work for you. Now, I just wanna pause here for a second and say thank you for staying this long because you probably know if you wanna see the sunshine, you have to weather the storm. And on that note, let me show you the new AI in the Pixel Weather app. And a little side note, for some reason, the weather widget on the Pixel device still jumps into the old weather app. So you have to actually open this via the app icon. So it might be worth placing this on one of your home screens. Right at the top of this app, you will see the new AI weather report. And this is a great way to get a quick overview of how the day will be. And just staying within this app for a second, it's probably worth knowing that you can actually move these weather widgets at the bottom of this page around into an order that makes more sense to you. Okay, now let's get into some of the fun photography tips and tricks. And I say some because if you guys wanna see a more dedicated Google Pixel camera feature video, just let me know. And if I get enough requests from you guys, I will make that for you. But anyway, let's start with this one. Open a photo in Google Photos, hit edit. Now in the bottom left corner, you will see this. This is the magic editor. And when you use this, you'll get a bunch of tools and this will vary depending on the type of photo that it is. And the auto frame one is really cool because it can expand the scene using AI generative fill. And sometimes it will just crop and level the photo as well. And it does give you a few options to choose from. When sky is detected, it can be replaced with AI sky, which can add drama to a photo. And you can also change the lighting in some scenarios, which can also look pretty cool. Now here's another little magic trick within the magic editor. Open a photo, go to the magic editor again. And I'm sure you've seen this before, but you can actually highlight people and objects within a photo and then instantly remove them. And it really does a great job of this and it does give you options as well. But now here's the next level to that. You can actually add things into the image using Gemini AI. For example, if I wanna swap out these nachos that I'm holding in this picture for a tasty burger, it can be done pretty easily. And this looks like a tasty burger, if it was real. <laughs> and check this out, this is Ori the dog. Well, at least I think she's a dog. Either that or a minion of Satan himself. So let's say I wanna change the background on this image. I can just draw around the dog and then write in what it is I want to add as the background. There we go, that's much more appropriate for this dog. <laughs> you know, sometimes the best thing about a picture is the hidden details in the background or in the distance. And there is a new AI tool in the Pixel camera that can help you uncover those details. This time, instead of opening the Magic Editor, we're just gonna go to the regular tools. And if you swipe across, you will see the tools section here. And this is where you'll find the zoom and enhance feature. So this gives you the ability to crop into small sections of the photo, and then it will use Gemini AI to fill in those missing details. And it actually works surprisingly well. So thank you so much for making it all the way to tip 17. And as a reward for staying this long into the video, here are a few more quick fire camera tips and tricks settings that I do recommend you test out on day one. Some of these are kind of well hidden, so take a look. Open your camera, toggle it across to video mode. Now in the bottom left corner, you have the video settings. Go to this and here you can adjust a bunch of things that's gonna improve the quality of your videos. For example, the standard format is HD. I do recommend you switch this to 4K. Also, I do recommend you set the frame rate to 30 frames per second if you want a consistent cinematic feel across all of your videos. However, if you're gonna be in more challenging lighting conditions, from time to time, you might wanna switch on the auto frame rate. This will just help your phone adjust to those lower light conditions. And also if you're trying to film something that's fast moving, it can ramp up the shutter speed as well. But with this enabled all the time, it will actually limit some of the other things that you can do with the camera. So just keep that in mind. Another quick setting while we're here within this menu is the speech enhancement feature. This is great to use if you know you're gonna be filming in a busy, noisy place 
as it will use AI to significantly reduce background noise and just focus on the voice that's in front of the camera. And it does a good job of this, but do remember, if you're in a quieter environment, your audio will be cleaner if you have this switched off. Now let's toggle back to the camera mode and go to the settings again in the bottom left corner. This time we're gonna to go to more settings. And here are three more things that you might wanna look at. First up, this one, guided frame. And this is a great tool to use because its sole purpose is to help you level up your camera, frame things better, and just generally compose better shots. So if you're still learning how to get the best photos from your device, this is a great tool that can help you with that. Also check this one out, the social share feature. This is off by default. If you enable it, you can choose your top three social media apps that you like to post images and videos to. Now, whenever you take a photo, those three apps will actually spring up briefly so you can quickly share them straight from your camera to the social media account. And here's the third one, frequent faces. Now with this enabled, your pixel will begin to recognize familiar faces that you're always taking photos of and it will better figure out how their skin tones should look. At first, it's a kind of learning process for your phone, but eventually, it will perfect those skin tones. So I see no reason why you wouldn't want to use this. So of course, there are loads more camera features like Best Take and Add Me, which are absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure you've seen them 10,000 times already in Google's advertising and in other videos. That's why I didn't put it in this one. But like I said before, if you want to see more of a camera deep dive from me, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to make that for you. And if you missed my Pixel 9 first things to do video, which is more to do with the settings that will help you unlock your phone's full potential on day one that's on screen right now so you can go check that out and if you like the look of this case that i'm using on my pixel there will be an affiliate link to that in the description and if you got any value out of this video hit the like button leave me a comment and let me know and if you just subscribed you are now one of the finest subscribers known to man and i will see you in the next one don't be late